the incidence of thyroid cancer in India is 8.7 lakh per year and FNAC currently is a sophisticated and the primary screening tool. Using it, we pathologists are supposed to find the few biologically aggressive cancers hiding amongst the numerous benign thyroid nodules, but at the same time not overdiagnosing clinically insignificant thyroid tumors. This is indeed a difficult task because the indeterminate zone is wider and taller uh, than the easily defined polar categories which by themselves have a very high sensitivity and specificity in the sense that a positive cytologic diagnosis result raises the probability of malignancy to 85 to 90 percent while a benign result lowers to uh, 1 percent. Nevertheless, in the absence of molecular studies and with high volume of cases, we cytomorphologists of tertiary care hospitals soon become accustomed in segregating the grains from the husk even in this indeterminate zone. Coming to the category 3 of ATP of undetermined significance or follicular lesion of undetermined significance also known as the OSFLUS category. Uh, by definition, uh, the, it, this category is reserved for cases with cytologic or architectural ATP which on one hand is not sufficient to be classified as suspicious for a follicular neoplasm or malignancy and on the other hand the ATP is more marked than can be attributed confidently to benign changes. Now I told you that uh, the TBS RTC gives uh, two names for this category but we are supposed to use either uh, OS or FLUS. Now because majority of the uh, ATP is related to follicular lesion, uh, using follicular lesion of undetermined significance is also acceptable. But what is not exactly acceptable and is discouraged is the use of OS category for cytologic ATP and FLUS category for architectural ATP. So do not class, uh, use these terms for the subclassification within this category. Now previously when we saw cytologic ATP we would feel safe to write suspicious for uh, papillary thyroid carcinoma or when we saw architectural ATP we used to write down in the report uh, rule out follicular neoplasm. Now, although this approach has the merit of directness, it is better to avoid such provocative descriptive language that has the potential to confuse the clinicians and the patients and they may just read that portion rule out PTC and then uh, start uh, doing the workup of the patient in that manner. Now we will come to uh, later on to the follow up modalities uh, when you report any condition under the AUS category. So when should be uh, a case be uh, categorized as AUS? Remember that when we embark on this category, the prerequisite is the specimen should meet the adequacy criteria which madam has told us uh, just now. At least 6 groups each comprising of at least 10 to 12 cells that must be there. Now an adequate specimen can either be mildly cellular, moderately cellular or it can be profusely uh, cellular. So this we have to keep in mind. Now, sorry, uh, when you have a nice cellular specimen which is adequate but still you are in doubt meaning that you are seeing ATP, you do have enough cells in hand but they are troubling you to come to any logical conclusion regarding an entity in spite of the clinical radiologic correlation. Now we will see one by one what are the different scenarios according to the Bethesda system that come under the OSFLUS category. The first scene is that the FNA sample is cellular with most of the follicular cells uh, looking very benign in macro follicles and fragments and the nuclei are also uniform but and there is some amount of colloid in the background but rare cells show nuclear uh, enlargement and uh, nuclear ATP and uh, irregular nuclear contours and this is known as the focal cytologic ATP. Now this can be seen in an adequate but posicellular or a cellular specimen. Other features of PTC like pseudo inclusion grooves etc are not seen. In another situation uh, you have uh, instead of focal ATP you are seeing many cells or most of the cells with mildly enlarged nuclei and with slightly pale chromatin and only limited nuclear contour irregularity. Grooves and nuclear pseudo inclusions are still absent and they are typically not seen. 
this again keeps you on the edge whether or not you are dealing with a non representative aspirate from a ptc that is papillary thyroid carcinoma now this sheet of cells has a honeycomb pattern there is mild nuclear atp in most of the cells so this comes under the extensive but mild cytologic atp and uh, there at places within the sheet you can have pale looking uh, nuclei pale looking nuclei with doubtful pseudo inclusions and grooves that are not convincing uh, and then this lesion merits to be included in the osplus uh, category now this uh, smear from a 48 year old female presented uh, who presented with solid cystic nodule 2.5 cm in diameter showed mild atp with nuclear clearing in most of the cells there were anatomic edges you can see rolling of the edges and central pa uh, pale areas were seen in the nuclei uh, we reported this as suspicious for papillary thyroid carcinoma however the histopathology sections from the excised nodule showed features of multinodular goiter now excessive reliance on one feature may lead to false positive result as in this case so or alternately alternatively sometimes uh, such features may also turn out to be a ptc so you have to be very careful and put the cells if you are not sure put them in the aus category because then you have the benefit of repeating the fns now yet another scenario is that of cells coming from cystic lesions the lesion that we dread most is the cystic papillary thyroid carcinoma now occasionally cyst lining cells show enlarged hyperchromatic uh slightly smudgy nuclei with abundant uh, cytoplasm or you see some nucleoli over here pointer is going pointer dikh raha hai acha or sometimes you see prominent nuclei and this worrisome atp could just be reactive or degenerative uh, changes as the cells are lying in the fluid for quite some time now but what is important if you see elongated nuclei with central pale looking areas then uh, that is a little bit suspicious of ptc or uh, when you see such uh, cells with partial or incomplete uh, grooves that is also little worrisome so uh, in such cases it is appropriate to diagnose these as osplus so you have to moderate the session with dr dani please join us now presence of rare pseudo inclusions in cyst lining cells is enough to prompt an osplus diagnosis they may not be too many they may not be profuse but if even if you see a very classical inclusion you can put it in osplus category and but if they are accompanied by compelling other compelling features of papillary thyroid carcinoma then the case should be considered as, as suspicious for malignancy now here you can see the foamy histiocytes and then a cluster of cell with one nucleus showing an inclusion and here these cells are also showing cytoplasmic blebs uh, telling you that they are coming from a, a cyst lining and a very nice inclusion is seen but other features were not seen what is characteristic of a cystic uh, ptc is the are the histiocytoid cells now the histiocytoid cells must be differentiated from the usual foam cells coming from the lining of the cyst uh, what are these cells these are large cells and they have higher nc ratio they have harder cyto eosinophilic cytoplasm or vacuolated cytoplasm and the vacuoles have very sharply defined edges as opposed to the fluffy vacuoles of the cyst macrophages that you can see in the other picture now somatomatous calcification in the absence of nuclear features of papillary carcinoma is best classified as osplus but they have to be very uh, characteristic lamellated bodies and lamellar bodies of inspissated colloid with radial uh, cracking can sometimes simulate somatoma bodies so these these are not true somatoma bodies you have to really see nice lamellated concretions but at times you are not very sure you do see this type of cracking and dense bodies uh, calcified structures and once a while you see this uh, groove nuclei then you the aus category a diagnosis of papillary carcinoma should not be rendered on architecture alone or on the presence of such papillary structures or fibrovascular cores if you see these alone without well visualized cytologic features of ptc you can report it as 
AUS because such papillary hyperplasia is very common with in uh, multinodular goiters. Now there is uh, sometimes ATPR which you cannot specify whether it is uh, because of PTC or because of any other factors that is the uh, ATPR not otherwise specified. And these cells, uh, now in this picture you can see very large cells with prominent nucleoli but this pattern of nuclear ATPR does not raise concern of papillary carcinoma and is therefore best classified as NOS. And this patient gave history of being treated with radioactive iodine. This patient, these are pictures from patient who was being treated with neomarkazole for three long years and then you see a lot of ATPR in the cells in the form of nuclear enlargement, hyperchromasia. You can see very nice follicles, macro follicles but the nuclear ATPR is also very scary. Always interpret such uh, marked focal ATPR in the light of clinical history and go in for a repeat aspirate. Remember that focal nuclear enlargement can also be a part of uh, endocrine disorder like this hormonogenetic goiter when, where you can get a sudden enlargement of a nucleus you can see in the MGG stain uh, picture there is a very large oval nucleus rest of the cells are looking very uh, uh, normal. Now when you see such ATPR do not think of any malignancy because if you think of follicular malignancy ATPR is not a feature of uh, follicular carcinoma. Interestingly, frankly bizarre cells are more common in follicular adenomas or atypical adenomas than carcinomas and uh, there it tends to be more uh, random than diffuse. Now this here you can see a profuse sprinkling of mature lymphocytes uh, but the accompanying cells are not Hurdle cells. Now this is a patient, a 27 year old newly married patient who presented with a huge mass in the neck. The anatomical segregation from where it is arising what was not very clear. But uh, you are seeing a lot of polymorphic population of lymphocytes and these, the large cells that you are seeing they are not clearly Hurdle cells because their cytoplasm is not that dense and they do not have cy sharp cytoplasmic margins. But definitely the nuclei are very uh, atypical, they are lobulated, there is binucleation and there is even a mitotic figure that you can see. And this you can put in the AUS category. Later this case turned out to be Hodgkin's lymphoma and the patient succumbed to her disease in NCI. As I told you, AUS category is very uh, heterogeneous category because you can get a variety of cells and when you see such cells in trabeculae with uh, granular uh, cytoplasm, a parathyroid lesion may come to your mind and try to confirm the radiological location of this nodule whether it is behind or even whether it is within the thyroid gland and you can also do the serological uh, investigations in such patient. Now this architectural ATPR and uh, both cytologic and architectural ATPR I will discuss after uh, some time when I discuss the category 4. Now the range of AUS how many cases you should have 1 to 22 percent is the range that is found but a 10 percent is acceptable. In our own uh, analysis in the department we had a AUS rate of about 1.8 percent. But uh, uh, what is more important is the AUS malignant ratio and this is a good quality indicator of any laboratory and it should not exceed 3. What is recommended is a repeat FNAC but even in 10 to 30 percent of cases a repeat FNAC does not give you a clear cut answer and it still remains OS plus. And what are the other recommendations? You can do lobectomy. If you are getting atypical cells from solid nodules uh, as compared to the cystic nodules then the chances of malignancy are high and then in that case the surgeon will go in for a lobectomy and you can also advise it. Uh, and you can do molecular testing when available. The gene expression classifier can tell you uh, which oncogenes uh, are present in this tumor. And for this purpose we use FNA aspirate only. So FNAC is the driver for doing molecular analysis. Now the risk of malignancy is around 10 to 30 percent and it's always very challenging uh, to calculate the risk of malignancy in this category. Why? Because uh, the cases belonging to the AUS category uh, are rarely excised. So the excision rate is very less and if you calculate the ROM associated with this category 
uh, on the excise nodules, then it will be an overestimation. And if you assume that all those those have not been excised are benign nodules, it will be an underestimation of the ROM. So it is a very difficult and tricky situation. And risk of malignancy also depends a lot on the socio-demographic factors, your hospital practice, the referral practice, how intensely you follow up the patient for histopathology, etc. <coughs> so some extrapolation is required to estimate the ROM. Now coming to the category 4, you have any problem till here, if any questions you can ask me. Because I know understanding and presenting it and then listening it in one go is a little difficult. Now the category 4 uh, tells you that it is a follicular neoplasm or suspicious for follicular neoplasm. Again there are two terms but you are supposed to use only one of them and make it a constant practice in your uh, hospital. Now cytologic diagnosis of follicular lesions is not an exact science and it is rather a bane for the pathologist. Prior to the introduction of TBS-RTC, there was great variability in the terminology for reporting follicular neoplasm. Some would call it as proliferation, lesion, indeterminate and uh, uh, or a neoplasm. Now this variability resulted from the fact that people were very afraid, they knew that when you are reporting it as neoplasm, it might turn out to be a carcinoma and there was no way to distinguish adenoma from carcinoma using FNAC alone. And secondly, follicular adenomas uh, outnumber follicular carcinomas in the population, but they have a very deceptive look on cytology. And thirdly, there is imperfect re reproducibility of these lesions, excised lesions amongst the histopathologists. Now, so which lesion you will put under the category of follicular neoplasm? The sample has to be at least moderately cellular. If it is sparse cellularity, and if you have some doubts, it will go in the AUS category. And secondly, there should not be any uh, true papillae. And then you can, there should not be, they say, PTC-like nuclear features, but we have various entities. So, uh, uh, you can have uh, PTC-like nuclear features may or may not be present. And what are the inclusion criteria? They are many, but the uh, classical triad includes moderately or markedly cellular smears with significant alteration in follicular architecture or microfollicular pattern and scant or no colloid. Other criteria are enlarged uniform follicular cells, cell crowding, moderate or scant cytoplasm, round uniform, slightly hyperchromatic nuclei with inconspicuous nucleolus. Now here you can see the abundant cellularity and the repetitive follicular arrangement and there is some amount of colloid in the background in the middle picture. Now this is a 55 year old female who came with a meningeal nodule and square smears were taken in our own uh, super speciality hospital. You can see the abundance of the follicles, they are all uniform, equisized and the appearance is so characteristic that you can uh, immediately pinpoint that the primary must be in the uh, thyroid. So our own lecturers, Dr. Archana, Dr. Saroj, right away told the clinicians that go get an ultrasound of the thyroid done and a nodule was detected in the thyroid and this was a case of a widely metastasizing follicular carcinoma. Now we got the smears from the thyroid, the picture on the right side is showing uh, you follicles. Now important defining feature of a micro follicle is uh, not the arrangement in a follicular pattern but also the overcrowding of cells within the follicle and uh, they hardly follow the rule of social distancing. The micro follicle designation for uh, the sake of definition for the residents here, you call a, a follicle as a micro follicle of follicular neoplasm. When you get around 15 follicular cells arranged in a circle, that is at least two-thirds complete. In some cases, you get crowded follicular cells in the form of ribbons or trabeculae uh, and uh, that are more prominent than the micro follicles or you can have sheets of cells as you can see in the pictures below and within the sheets then you have to search for micro follicles. At times, uh, plenty dispersed cells are seen alone and there are no formations and here you can see mild variation in the size of the nucleus and evenly dispersed granular chromatin. 
Now, although most follicular neoplasm we say are highly cellular specimens, cellularity by itself is not sufficient to merit this designation. Now, if the majority of the follicular cells are arranged in a macro follicular pattern, which you can see here very clearly, and they are flat, there is no overcrowding of these cells, then the sample can be considered benign. And a good percentage of cases turn out to be uh, not to be neoplasms, and that is why the term suspicious for follicular neoplasm is justified and has been retained by the Bethesda system. Now, in this table, you can see a study of 122 cases and 320 case, uh, 26 cases of follicular neoplasm out of these almost 47% and 20% of the nodules did not show any neoplastic lesion. Now, uh, uh, coming that, uh, back to the uh, OSFLUS category where I had uh, not discussed the architectural ATPA, here uh, in this category when you see architectural ATPA, a fairly good number of lesions uh, can be put in the AUS category when the number of follicles are less or they are not sufficient or they are not meeting the criteria of follicular neoplasm. And when the... Uh, And then what do you do? You do a repeat aspiration and uh, try to solve the dilemma. Or there is another situation where uh, there is moderate cellularity, but when uh, and you see the cells in cell balls or three-dimensional clusters and with scanned colloid. Or when the follicular cells are entrapped in the blood like you are seeing in the three pictures below, blood clot can itself create a crowded artifact. And you might feel that this is an arrangement of follicle or cell balls. Although this pattern is of low risk, AUS diagnosis uh, is warranted due to concern regarding limited sampling of a lesion that would otherwise merit a follicular neoplasm diagnosis if the specimen uh, was uh, were more cellular. So the follow-up of this patient was follicular adenoma. Now, or at times you have more prominent than usual population of micro follicles, but the overall proportion of these follicles is not sufficient for a diagnosis of follicular neoplasm. Now, this can happen when if there is a single slide or there is a single area on the slide that looks different than the rest of the aspirates. So, your cytology is as good as, the, uh, as your smears. If you prepare good smears, you are going to get good morphology and distribution of these cells. Now, sometimes it is little subjective. Some people might think that they can put this it into the uh, follicular neoplasm category or some might feel that uh, they are less confident and they want to use the AUS category. Now, all this is dictated by the quantity and the quality of cells. And also whether you want uh, a repeat FNAC, you are comfortable with a repeat FNAC or you want to uh, put the ball in the coat of the surgeon, so let them decide whether they want to remove that uh, radiologically nicely defined nodule. Now, in the OSFLUS category, when you have both cytologic and architectural atypia, here a totally different story starts. Now, you can have both microfollicles along with extensive mild cytologic atypia, and this is more common with FEPTC, follicular variant of papillary thyroid carcinoma, or its indolent form that is the NIFT-P, non-invasive follicular thyroid neoplasm with papillary-like nuclear features. But this has not been firmly established. There are more studies to come to endorse these features. Now, cytologic ATPA here will be see, seen in the form, it is not very exuberant. It is in the form of mild nuclear enlargement, pale nuclei, very well-defined nuclear margins and uh, sharp uh, and thick nuclear margins and there is crowding of cells. But it is said that you should not see true papillae and you should not see nuclear inclusions if you are keeping in mind uh, uh, the diagnosis of NIFT-P. We will come to that a little later. Now, again, coming back to the follicular neoplasm category when, uh, category when you have uh, enough cells and all the features are nicely uh, seen, here you are seeing a very a good cellularity and there is a flat sheet of cells in which almost all the nuclei are looking pale in the center and if we zoom them, uh, they are uh, probably intranuclear inclusions and then you are seeing a follicular arrangement of the cells. Now, in such a case, when we, uh, we are reporting such a case, we are keeping in, we are expecting that the histopathology will be either FEPTC or NIFT-P. Now, we were talking of the paradigm 
change that has occurred. Previously, we used to have the follicular adenomas, which are totally not. Under the umbrella of follicular neoplasm, we used to have the follicular adenoma, which is totally non-invasive. And then you had the follicular carcinoma, uh, which, uh, for which the sine qua non is the uh, invasion of the capsule or the uh, uh, vessels. Now this, but there was no way by cytology to differentiate between the two and both these uh, lesions did not show nuclear features of PTC. Then came uh, the, uh, uh, the classification uh, or a category of follicular variant of PTC and when we became very familiar in diagnosing this category with all the uh, features of uh, PTC in the nuclei and a follicular, in a follicular pattern tumor, we started again putting these lesions under the follicular neoplasm category, but still we were uh, in the blind, we don't know what is happening in the capsule or in the uh, vessels whether they, or not there is any invasion. And then uh, now came just 5 to 7 years back came the category of DIFP. Now these are well demarcated tumors, they may be solid or cystic, but they have a, usually a mixed follicular pattern, macro follicles as well as micro follicles. So whenever you have macro follicles, the chances of getting some colloid are there. So sometimes you may get some scanty colloid in the background. And there is uh, isolated papillae comprising less than 1% of the tumor mass may be seen in the histopathology section. And these days they are saying that even that much is not allowed. Zero papillae, that is what you want. But the nuclear atypia is not very significant. Now, uh, why, uh, what is, uh, it was observed that the encapsulated non-invasive FEPTC, that is the NIFT, uh, the patients, uh, why they want to segregate this patient from FFPTC because they were being over treated with thyroidectomy and uh, they otherwise do very well with lobectomy in the long term follow up. So they are a sort of very low grade or sort of benign neoplasm, not exactly benign but they are neoplasm with a very indolent course. Now exactly what are the features of NIFT? Typically, it has mild nuclear ATP I showed, there is crowding, there will be follicular arrangement and here you can see plenty of grooves and uh, pale nuclei and irregular nuclear contours. But true papillae and nuclear holes should not be seen. Now, in some instances, when you see both architectural features concerning for a follicular neoplasm and nuclear features concerning a PTC, like you see the nuclear holes, grooves here and there, the Bethesda system says that it gives you the provision of adding a note and you can write that definite distinction among these entities is not possible on cytology material. So kindly consider the possibility of NIFT. So what is the implication of this report? The surgeons who have the facility of doing uh, triaging cytology to uh, molecular testing, they will go in for molecular testing. Or if the surgeons will be very alert at the time of surgery and uh, when they see that there are multiple nodules, small and big nodules or there is local invasion, the surgery will be more extensive or if there is a well-defined small nodule, it will be in the form of lobectomy and not a total thyroidectomy. Now, as I told you, invasive FEPTC versus non-invasive FEPTC, that is NIFT, cytologic and our distinction uh, between the two lesions. And NIFT-P has more subtle nuclear features, whereas FEPTC has very diffuse atypia. And what are the differences of classic PTC and NIFT-P? They are very clear. In classic PTC, you will have papillary structures, nuclear inclusion, samoma bodies, etc. But in NIFT-P, it is a microfollicular pattern. It is a follicular pattern tumor. And there are not much differences in the grooves that you see in a quality or quantity of the grooves that you see in NIFT-P and uh, the classic PTC. So, uh, should you rush to downgrade? Suppose you want to uh, report this as follicular neoplasm, a particular uh, slide which all these features, but you feel you are not very sure because you are seeing groups, some other areas or a repeat aspirate may show nuclear holes also. So, when you are not sure, you feel that you should uh, go and add this lesion to the OSFLUS category. But just be, uh, remember that it is not necessary to downgrade. You can still stick to your criteria and more important than the criteria is that you come to know or you tell the surgeon that this, uh, uh, can, there is a possibility of NIFT-P, keep it in the follicular neoplasm category. Now, 
बट यू हैव टू बी फुल्ली अवेयर ऑफ द रिस्क ऑफ मैलेग्नेंसी वेन यू चूज कैटेगरी थ्री और फोर नाउ वेन यू आर चूजिंग दी these categories you know that the this uh, table is showing the resection rate which varies from different uh, regions and their uh, their institutions and the rom also varies in the resected nodules now naturally in the resected nodules the rom uh, the risk of malignancy that you see and you correlate with cytology uh, is uh, very easy to assess and you can see the variability the more you excise the nodule the risk of malignancy will be higher but what is actually required for us in the long term is the overall risk of malignancy and that comes after considering all the socio demographic factors and your hospital practice and when you take this into consideration whatever the region it is usually more or less a constant now there is robust data on the predictive value of follicular neoplasm interpretation because lobectomy is the long established standard of care for this diagnosis now what happens uh, when you report uh, follicular neoplasm 15 to 35% hyperplastic nodules uh, of colloid goiter will be seen in the histopathology majority of them will be benign neoplasms the risk of malignancy will be 25 to 40% but all the malignancies will not be follicular carcinoma of thyroid and uh, around 27 to 68% of them will be papillary thyroid carcinoma now studies on mutations are there in the follicular neoplasm both retrospective and prospective studies and they have shown a very high sensitivity and specificity now follicular cell neoplasm hurdle cell type we have seen suprita madam has shown us uh, all the features when you can get uh, hurdle cells and the risk of malignancy is similar to follicular neoplasm that is 10 to 40% by definition the cellular uh, aspirate should be highly cellular and uh, they should comprise exclusively uh, to 99 to 100% of the cells should be hurdle cells and how these cells are seen they are either seen singly or in sheets clusters or three dimensional cell clusters and here you can see a flat sheet with dense blue abundant granular cytoplasm it looks green on uh, pap stain and uh, uh, pink dense pink on the hne stain and the uh, cells they are polygonal the nucleus is central or eccentric with prominent uh, nucleoli but if you see follicular cells colloid or you see lymphocytes polymorphic population of lymphocytes uh, rule out colloid goiter and uh, 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 lymphocytic thyroiditis now this is a case 56 year female uh, who came with a solitary but spongy nodule you, it, the slide was showing almost 100% cells were uh, uh, hurdle cells and there was also some amount of uh, capillaries uh, that were wrapping these cells and this favored a hurdle cell neoplasm and that is what we reported but i was very disappointed when the histopathology specimen came and dr kautharkar reported it as uh, hyperplastic nodules in multinodular goiter now in order to call the these hurdle cells as neoplastic an important criterion is the presence of hurdle cell atypia of which there are two types the large cell atypia and the small cell atypia in the large cell the cytoplasm uh, uh, features are same but the nuclei have two times the variability the nuclei are usually large but this large cell dysplasia uh, itself is a unreliable feature and when present goes more in favor of mng or lymphocytic thyroidism but you here you can see in one of the pictures there uh, there is a transgressing uh, vessels are seen and this is another important feature and with, when this is present uh, it strongly supports the diagnosis of a neoplasm hurdle cell type this uh, uh, this is a uh, pictures showing small cell dysplasia the cells are relatively sm uh, small with less abundant granular cytoplasm higher nc ratio than the usual hurdle cells and such sheets of cells they do prefer a neoplasm a neoplasm is always monoclonal remember and therefore there is more uniformity of cells as compared to the reactive conditions at times both small and large cells uh, dysplasia will be seen and there is marked variation in cell and nuclear size and mitotic figures can be seen 
Now, the minimum uh, criteria is the cellularity. If the cellularity is sparse, you see, uh, you are seeing only hydrocells, cells, but there are very few, you can put it in the osphalus category. But if it is a cellular specimen without dysplasia and there is abundant non watery colloid, it qualifies for a benign lesion. But if the uh, colloid is scant or absent, some would prefer it to put it as follicular neoplasm Hadzel cell type, but others would still like to report it as benign and just um, uh, give a note that there is a possibility of Hadzel cell neoplasm. Now, just to conclude all the findings uh, before that, why the distinction between follicular neoplasm and follicular neoplasm Hadzel cell type? We, first is the striking morphologic differences between these two cytologic patterns and cell types. Second is the different, di there are totally different diagnostic considerations when you see such sheets of cells. Uh, they could be coming from MNG and uh, CLT when you are seeing the herbal cells and this demands a medical treatment. But if you are, when you are seeing follicular cells in abundance, you, to your mind will come the follicular neoplasm with all its uh, possibilities of malignancy. And uh, thirdly, they are uh, genetically different neoplasms and the PAX8, PPA, or gamma rearrangement is seen in 26 to 53 percent of the follicular carcinomas, but rarely in herbal cell carcinoma. So what do you need to know in the end is you have to generate a report which is useful to the clinician and from that point of view, you need to know your own basics. You cannot lose sight of your basic when you are doing the same work over and over again and daily and you have to be grounded with your basics. So you need to know all the details of the clinical history. At the cost of repetition, we will bring home these points. Even Madam has told you that uh, social de demographic factors, family history, the TFTs and also know whether prior FNA has been done or not because in the uh, repeat FNAs, you, sometimes you can get a lot of ATPR. You should know ultrasound or radiological features very nicely. Be friends with your radiologist. Try to understand the meaning of the hyperechoic, hypoechoic, spongy nodules, all this. And know what is the anatomical background of this nodule. Sometimes you may be dealing with just a parathyroid tumor. And get a nice adequate specimen. And because if you get an adequate specimen, your quality of smears will be good, the cytomorphology will be good. And uh, report the FNA with a classification scheme. Use any scheme, be it Bethesda or some categories that your institute has designed. But let it be a tiered classification so that you can communicate nicely with the clinicians. And last but not the least, your thyroid cytomorphology should be uh, very thorough for which this CME has been organized. Thank you so much.